Sometimes when troubleshooting DICOM networks, it's helpful to use some troubleshooting tools to both send and receive DICOM files uh, without having to use a vendor's application to do that. So if you're testing a vendor's application's ability to receive a DICOM file or to send uh, DICOM files to another SCP, uh, these tools can be helpful. The two tools that I'm gonna show you is Store SCP and Store SCU, and they're both available at dicom.office.de. So these are both open source tools. They're free, you can download them. They're part of the toolkit. When you download it, you'll get a rather large bin directory. So what I do is I extract the two tools that I need. So in this case, I extracted uh, Store SCU and I put it in a directory called Store SCU on my Windows machine. And same with Store SCP. I just created a directory called Store SCP on my Windows machine. And what we're gonna do with these two tools is I'm going to set up my Store SCP to be a DICOM listener for receiving DICOM and then Store SCP is going to send DICOM files to Store SCP. In addition, I need some DICOM files to experiment with, so I just grabbed a few uh, randomized uh, DICOM files, or anonymized, rather, DICOM files. I have two types that I downloaded, just to give you an example. One is I have a, a couple of CR images that are implicit little endian, meaning they're not compressed. And then I have a few JPEG 2000 images that are compressed. So these are CT images which are compressed, and there's a whole bunch in here, and I'll show you some options with that. So the first step is we have to set up our listener. So I have a command prompt running up here. And first I need to change directory to my uh, directory that I created. So it's gonna be C colon backslash store SCP. So now I'm in the, S the directory that has store SCP. The command to start store SCP is store SCP. Um, if you wanna see the options that are available to you with store SCP, you can just hit enter and it'll display all the options. Uh, if you don't wanna have to scroll up and down, you could type it to something like more, and then you can scroll through the options if you like and scroll up and down. But either way, we're gonna run store SCP. I know that I wanna run it in verbose mode, so I do dash V, so that's gonna show all the output. If you don't run it in verbose mode, you won't see any output. Um, it'll just see files showing up in a directory. Uh, so I'm gonna run it dash V so we can see all those messages. Then you have to pass it a port number. So this is the port number that it's gonna listen on. I know I have no DICOM devices on here listening on port 4444. So I'm gonna use 4444. You wanna make sure you use a port that you're not already using for something else. So if you already have a DICOM listener on here, maybe you're testing this from your PAX system to see if you have DICOM connectivity or you can get this, you know, you can send some DICOM files to it or something. Uh, don't set it to listen on the same port as whatever's already turned on, otherwise it's going to uh, conflict. However, uh, in some cases when I'm troubleshooting, I'll turn off a PAX system um, so it's not listening on a port and I will use its port and see if it can receive DICOM files. And of course, it'll store the DICOM files, so if you need to import those into the packs later on, you certainly could so you don't lose the files. So we're gonna go ahead and run that. So now we're listening on port 4444 for DICOM with store SCP. Now we're gonna set up our client side. This is gonna be the service class user or the node that's gonna send our item. So again, or our DICOM file. So again, I'm gonna change directory to store SCU, the directory I created. Sorry, I forgot to put C colon backslash. Okay, so now I'm gonna run the store SCU command. And once again, if you just run the command, it'll show you the options. I know that the options that I wanna run are, um, I, I'm actually, we're not gonna run any options this time. I'm just gonna pass it a file name and see if it'll send the file. So I know the IP address I wanna send to is 127.0.0.1. And my port number is 4444. By the way, I'm using 127.0.0.1 if you're not familiar, is the local loopback. That always works when you're sending to the same machine. Uh, but I could just as easily put the real IP address of my machine. That would work as well. And if, if I were sending, if I were using Store SCU to send to a device on another machine, of course I would have to put the other machine's IP address in there. Uh, so port 4444, and then I pass it the file name. So inside this directory, I know I've got a folder called DICOM, and inside that DICOM folder, I'll show you, I've got three images. I'm gonna send uh, file 001.dcm. It's gonna be 001.dcm. Now when I hit enter, it should attempt to send. We saw two things. Number one, uh, the window on the right-hand side showed that it sent, uh, you know, we didn't really see any feedback, but hopefully it sent the file. We could put verbose mode on so we can see those messages. And on the left-hand side, um, you can see here where it received the association. Uh, all these little dots are the uh, DICOM PDUs being received, and then it stored the DICOM file. So it shows us that it actually stored the file. It stores the file, the first two uh, letters of the file name is the uh, abstract syntax or the modality type that maps 
to the abstract syntax, and then all the other numbers, of course, it's the UID for that particular image. So that's the, the image instance UID. So there's my image file sitting here on this side. So it was received by store SCP. I'm going to go ahead and delete that file since we don't need it. Um, next, I have three files in there. I don't want to just send one file. I want to send three files. So let's see if we can do that. I'm just going to run CLS to clear the screen here to, to reduce some of the clutter. I can't do that over here, otherwise I'll be uh, killing the listener. By the way, if you do want to kill the listener, you just hit Control C. Control C will stop your listener. I'm going to hit the up arrow key to start it back up again, though. And, and actually, I can clear the screen over here, too, just so we can keep things nice and clean. So I'm going to hit the up arrow key twice. That'll give me my command history so I can see store SCP. Hit enter. And now we're listening on the left side. On the right side, I'm going to send a study. I'm going to hit the up arrow key to get to a command. So this is the command I ran previously. But I'm going to add a dash V in here, which is verbose mode. Notice I have dash V in my store SCP up on the top. Now on the bottom right, I'm going to have dash V, which is going to add verbose mode. And when I hit enter, it sends the file. Now we can see some more information. We can see the request on the right-hand side and the receiving uh, association on the left-hand side. So you can kind of see how the two are working together. But let's add uh, one more thing here. Instead of just sending the one file, let's try to send the entire directory. So there is an option which is plus SD, which stands for scan directory. And that will send all three files. So now when I go look in this directory, I have all three files. And you can see that store SCP received all three files. Now let's try something else. Um, one thing you'll notice is I'm only sending using an IP address and a port number. So it's using the default AE titles that are um, uh, built into store SCU. But you don't always want to use the default AE titles. A lot of times you want to try to mimic a DICOM node on your network sending to your pack. So you want to mimic some node. Um, there are eight calling and called AE titles. So you can define those with some switches. So we'll do AEC. I'll call this store SCU. Or actually, let's keep it simple. I'll just call it SKU and dash AET. And I'll call it uh, SCP. So now it'll send the file, but it will call itself more specifically SCU and call, um, call the person it's sending to the SCP. If you forget those uh, options, you can just do um, run, uh, type the command, hit enter. It'll show you all those options. So you would see that in the list, uh, the dash AET and dash AEC. And it'll tell you which is the called and which is the calling AE title. So of course, called is the AE title that you're sending to. And the calling is the AE title you're calling yourself. All right, so now let's play with compression a little bit. So the problem here is this is going to work great for files uh, that are uncompressed. But if I try to send um, these J2K compressed files, and just for a moment here, I'm going to turn off uh, scan directory because I don't want to try all of them. And we'll come back over here. And uh, my file name is called IMA000.vcm. So that's one of my files that is compressed. When I try to send that, notice what happened. It aborted the association. Um, it was not able. So this little tool is not able to convert that J2K uh, loss of image to little endian. But you may be asking yourself, why did this little tool try to send little endian if the image is J2K? And what happened here is that uh, when it tried to negotiate with uh, the SCP, uh, by default, it always negotiates little endian, uh, implicit little endian. If you want to override that, you can. So I know this image is J2K. So I'm going to come over here and add a command line option. Dash XV will try to negotiate JPEG 2000. Uh, so let's try that. Now, that fails. Once again, um, let's see why. It says here, cannot access file 444. Let's see. Ah, I see the problem. Uh, right here, I put dash AET. SCP is supposed to be there. I need to have dash AET. SCP is the argument for dash AET. Um, so I have to put it back here. So dash XV. Let's try that again. And it fails again. Uh, this time, if you notice, again, once again, it tried to send little endian, which we don't want it to do. We want it to just pick up this J2K file and try to send it J2K as is, because maybe we're trying to test sending J2K. On the store SCU side, I'm going to go ahead and kill that again. There is a similar option on store SCU. I can put plus XV, which will tell store SCP to accept JPEG 2000. So right now, when store SCU is trying to send JPEG 2000, Store SCP is rejecting it because it's not set up to allow that. So one of the options that you'll find in the, uh, in the help is uh, X plus XV, which will allow it to accept uh, 
JPEG 2000. So let's go ahead and run that. So now this should accept JTK. We'll come back over here and try this again. And we can see that it sent the file. It's very small. So there's only a few little dots on here and it went very, very fast because uh, it's a really small file. But we can go ahead and send all the files. If you recall, the way we do that is I'm going to remove the file name. So we just have the folder name. And then I'm going to add another option. We're going to put plus SD, which is scan directories. I'm going to hit enter. And notice now we've got lots of activity. And if I go over here, I can start seeing all my files, right? So all the files now are showing up in store SCP. So I showed you a number of things. I showed you how to set up store SCU to send compressed or uncompressed and how to use AE titles. With these basic commands, you should be able to um, troubleshoot using just about any type of modality, as long as you have some files you can use to send to an SCP. So if you have a patch and you want to test sending to it, as if you're a modality or a node or a view station or whatever, uh, you can do that. And likewise, if you want to test receiving DICOM files from some node on your network without using the packs, you can run store SCP to do that to receive the files. Store SCP is also useful if you're in a pinch, if you need to get some files. Maybe for some reason they're not sending to your packs, but you got to get the files out of the modality. You can use something like store SCP to do that. I hope that this was helpful. Thank you for watching.